what's up YouTube today I want to talk about my chest rig and do a little update video on it talk about some trials and errors that I've had over the last few months with it as well as give some of you guys some ideas that are looking to get your first chest rig started obviously there's different style chest rigs out there this is kind of like a Haley strategic knockoff if you will from Amazon I just kind of wanted to see how this would feel or how this would work in the first place because I was new to kit before I invested the money in the actual name brand one I kind of wanted to just see how this style of chest rig in the first place was working for me and I'm really liking it so far so so with that being said let's go ahead and talk about the actual items that I'm running and again some trials and errors that I've had over the last few months with it so so really quick I just kind of want to show you guys how it goes on and as far as what kind of harness it has so this is going to be your X style harness there's also going to be your H style harnesses as well but basically you're just going to put one arm in here the other arm in this side like so and then obviously the straps gonna go around here and it's just gonna clip right here on the side like so and now I am good to go so yeah you can layer this over your plate carrier or you can just run it on your body like so but yeah there's numerous reasons and numerous perks of why you should get a chest rig I just kind of wanted to show you guys how it goes on this one in particular with the X style harness like I said there's also the H style harness as well but this one's going to be your X style with a little strap on the side again just to keep it from bouncing up and down this just keeps it nice and snug to the body like so but yeah I just kind of wanted to just give you guys an idea of how this chest rig goes on in particular with the X style harness just to show you guys how convenient it is and how easy it is to put it on so with that being said to get it off you're just gonna unclip the bottom like so and then you're just gonna pull your head out and then like that you'll be good to go I like to leave the clip undone that way I can always hop in really fast and uh, I just have to put this one around and clip it in if I need to so just kind of want to give you guys an idea of how the X style harnesses go on and how this chest rig in particular goes on just to show you how easy it is and how convenient it is if you see here I have my uh, antenna my Nagoya antenna from my UV5R from uh, Beofeng basically I have the antenna running through the chest rig right here just to kind of keep it from flopping around um, that's a whole other video as far as why I like to run the Nagoya antenna on the UV5R. I just wanted to explain why that's running through there and also to show you the convenience of it. So, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video as far as what items I'm running inside here and the reasons why I set it up the way I did. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the items that I'm running on my chest rig and kind of go over the reasons why. I guess we'll start on this side and kind of work our way around. So over here on the right side, I have a tourniquet holder. This is going to be a Velcro one to where you just take the back off. Like so. And again, it's going to hold my cat tourniquet for me. It's just a nice little addition uh, to not have to take up one of the pouches that's on the chest rig itself. So again, it's just a nice little Velcro tourniquet holder and um, I'll post a link for this one in the description just in case you guys are interested you can run them on your plate carriers you can run them on your range bags your chest rigs anywhere you have velcro pretty much it just makes it really convenient on your gun belt pretty much yeah anywhere you have velcro so after the uh, tourniquet we have back there I'm gonna have uh, some of my Magpul gloves obviously up here in the front I just have it on a little carabiner clip it's just nice to be able to not have to dig through your pouches to get your gloves, just always having them on the front, easy to access. So yeah, just got my gloves on the front, little carabiner clip there. I'm also running a flashlight. This isn't gonna be like a Surefire or anything like that. This is just called a gear light, but this has been really solid for me. It's waterproof, it's made in America. Um, it's cheap, but quality at the same time. So again, I highly recommend having some type of uh, flashlight on your chest rig or your kit that way obviously you can see at night this one has been really solid though I like this one a lot it has it also has the adjustable throw so you can you can go wide obviously a little more narrow and a little further 
But yeah, this is going to be a gear light flashlight. This has been really solid. Keep that one face down just in case it does happen to get turned on when I don't want it to. That way it's not just shining everywhere in my face and letting people know where I'm at. So other than that, after that, we're going to have some good old sheer scissors here, which is really nice. These were blue, so I just painted them a little bit to make them not stand out as much. Those just kind of sit right behind my uh, front pouch in between my placard, which is really nice. So that's convenient. So yeah, just some scissors on there. Make sure to get some uh, sheer scissors though. That way, if you ever have to cut through material, um, shirts, clothes, whatever, these are gonna go right through it. So just some medical scissors comes in handy for sure. After that, let's just go over the front pouch kinda and see what I have inside of it. First off, I like to keep my pouch organized. I don't like things just kinda loose in there. I want them all organized. So if you notice, I bag everything up to where it's just organized a bit more. This is gonna be my miscellaneous items. I have some batteries in here for my optics, my ear pro, my weapon lights, etc. I also have an auxiliary cord for my ear pro as well if I wanna run it to my push to talk. Just having some miscellaneous items in the same bag. And then I have my boo-boo kit, if you will. Just got some uh, bandages, some ointments, medical gauze, medical tape, Tylenol, stuff like that. Basically, for if I'm at the range, it's kind of nice to not have to run to the car or forget certain things at home and have to just call it a day. It's nice to be able to continue through your training and just have some supplies on you as well. So after that, I got some more medical up here. I got some bigger bandages. I also am gonna have a right in the rain notebook. This is really nice to have um, with the waterproof pen as well. I am here in California, so it doesn't get wet obviously often here, but you never know. So it is nice to have some type of right in the rain notebook, whether you're taking dope at the range, writing down your numbers, if you have some stuff you don't wanna forget, if you're doing some reconnaissance, whatever. You're, uh, if you're LARPing, it's just nice to have some um, something to write your info down here on a right in the rain notebook. So I also have one of those cheap little emergency blankets. Probably will never use this, but you never know, just to be safe. So had some extra room, just decided to throw that in there. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm running in the front. Basically, like I said, uh, right in the rain notebook, got an extra emergency blanket, medical supplies, antibiotic ointment, um, I also got some medical gloves because, like I said, you never know. People are bleeding, whatever. It's nice to be able to have some gloves to throw on. Also have some chem lights in here just in case I'm doing stuff at nighttime or if I want to mark myself, whatever. It's nice to be able to have some, uh, some type of way to mark yourself at night. Also for emergencies, whatever. Again, just a couple chem lights in there. Comes in handy. So again, like I said, I just like to keep my bag super organized to where everything is kind of accessible, but not just falling around and kind of all over the place. So again, I'm not saying copy this exact same loadout. Obviously you want to get stuff that works for you, but just wanted to give you guys some ideas of what I'm running inside my chest rig. So with that being said, after the, uh, the pouch in the front, I'm also going to be running a pistol mag over here for my Glock 19. This is gonna be with a cross armory base plate. These are really, really good base plates. If you guys are looking for a base plate for your Glock, I highly recommend the cross armories. I am here in California, so these are just gonna be 10 round magazines and these are gonna be plus zero. But they do add some perks as far as the magazine dropping out right away because of the heavier weight on the bottom as opposed to it getting hung up in the mag well. Also, when you reload, the difference of uh, of pushing the magazine and, stop, and having to stop right here as opposed to up a little bit more. Just a little more perks of more consistent reloads. Numerous perks of the base pads. Obviously there's different kinds, but I like the cross armory. So just so you guys know. Other than that, after that, I also am running some black electrical tape on the front. I'm always running electrical tape on almost all my kit. Uh, for those of you that have been watching the channel for any time now, you guys know I love to have electrical tape. This electrical tape comes in handy for so many reasons. Not just for taping targets, but if you have to tape your gear, if you get a little cut on your finger, it's nice to be able to tape that up. It's just numerous perks, uh, obviously targets, all kinds of stuff you can use the tape for. So I like to have it in the front, just easy to access. After that, I also am going to be running a Sharpie 
You can never have too many Sharpies when you're at the range. So just kind of have that rigged inside there. I also have a pencil. This is uh, important. A lot of people want to run Sharpies only, but again, in the rain, that Sharpie probably won't work as well as this pencil. So it's nice to have rain or waterproof pens and stuff like that as well. But also having a pencil on your kit instead of just marker, that way it's not permanent. It's easier to write in the rain with as opposed to a marker. Numerous reasons with the uh, pencil, obviously lead, obviously the ink not running out, you can just always sharpen if you have to. So if you're gonna have a marker on your kit, you might as well have a pencil in there if you can, just to be safe, I highly recommend that. Other than that, let's kind of talk about my comm setup here. So this is gonna be the BTEC push to talk. I like this BTEC push to talk a lot for the Beofang UV5R. It's only about a $20 upgrade on top of the Nagoya antenna that I'm running here, as you can see as well. This is another $20 upgrade for your UV5R, which is less than $30 already. So if you think about it, a $20 push to talk, a $20 upgraded antenna, which is gonna give you by far a lot better reception. And then the less than $30 UV5R, you're talking about less than $80 to have a quality comm setup. So obviously I'm sure there's way more expensive comms out there and better setups, but for the most part, for what I'm doing with uh, just training with the homies or just training by myself, it's nice to be able to have some type of way to communicate for emergencies or like I said, if you're training with friends, to be able to talk to them and not have to constantly pull your walkie talkie out of your pocket or off your hip. It's just nice to be able to just push that button and, and go to work. So again, just a nice uh, option out there. If you're looking for a quality, decent comm setup, I highly recommend the, the UV5R, the Nagoya antenna upgrade with the BTEC push to talk upgrade, which is gonna be all in all less than $80. So again, solid communication setup for your basic uh, Minuteman, Rifleman, whatever you want to call it, prepared civilian. It's just a nice option out there. So after that, I'm going to be running my Hex magazines. These are 10 round magazines because I am here in California, just so you guys know. But I've had these for a few years now and they've been quality. Not too many malfunctions. They've been durable. I drop these a lot, throw them a lot, and they're still working really well. So again, Hex magazines. These chest rigs are going to have some Kydex inserts, which are nice, but I kind of just, to make them a little better and make these not fall out as much, I just put some Ranger bands around here, which is going to make it grip onto the kit a little bit more. So that way when you're, that way when you're actually pulling your magazines out, the Kydex doesn't fly out with it as well. So just a nice retention addition as well. So just a little perk there. Um, again, you got to adjust your kit. Don't think your kit's just going to come perfect out of the bag. You got to adjust it to your body and, and to what you're trying to do accordingly. So speaking of that, I kind of wanted to go over a new addition that I have on my chest rig as well. And this is going to be something I think all of you guys that shoot AR-15 should have on you at all times. Whether it's in your gun belt, whether it's in your range bag, on your kit, plate carrier, whatever. These are really cheap. These are called paint can openers. As you can tell, it's going to have a little tooth right here. So whenever you're shooting your AR-15 every now and then, it's rare, but it does happen every now and then, you get a stuck brass in your chamber. Numerous reasons why that could have happened, but when you get stuck brass, it's hard to get out. You're not gonna be able to just rack the charging bolt and expect the brass to get ejected. So what this does is that little lip, that little tooth right here, basically you're gonna put in the chamber, it's gonna grab the end of the brass and you're just gonna pull it out. So, so again, a paint can opener for any of you guys that are shooting AR-15, these are huge. I've used this numerous times already with different rifles at the range with people that have got brass stuck in their chamber. And like I said, that's the reason I went and got one because of trial and error at the range of having to use someone else's paint can opener and uh, having to have help from someone else to get brass out of my chamber, I don't ever want to have to do that again, obviously. So again, this is just a nice nice item to have for anybody that shoots AR-15. It's just a nice uh, security reassurance knowing that you can always fix your, uh, your gun when needed. So that's just a nice perk to have on there. And as you can tell, again, I just kind of rigged it behind the uh, placard right there next to the Sharpie. So if I ever need to, boom, it's good to go. So I just kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit and why I'm running a paint can opener. So highly recommend that. After that, I think we are pretty much good to go. I did rig my push to talk um, and uh, the antenna through the harness, as you can see here, so you guys know. And I like to run my push to talk button on the outside. That way it's just easier to access. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about this chest rig and the reasons I set it up the way I did. 
I hope I give some of you guys some ideas that are looking to get your first chess rig started. And again, this is going to be a knockoff chess rig. It's not a name brand one, but this thing has been solid for at least four or five months now. So, so again, if you're looking to get into kit, I definitely recommend getting a chess rig. So there's numerous perks and reasons of why you should have a chess rig, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of all the items that you can stow on your body and uh, be able to train with at the range and just be a little more prepared in general uh, with just having a chest rig. So if you can't afford a plate carrier, if you don't have a gun belt, if you're looking for something that can kind of just get you started into the game, being able to have all this on your body and your chest is just really a nice option. And uh, like I said, just really convenient. So, so yeah, again, um, I just want to thank you guys for watching. And I hope I help some of you guys that are looking for some ideas of what to put on your chest rig or kind of how to get started with a chest rig. And again, if you have any questions, make sure to shoot me a comment down below. And thank you.